could be a worthwhile project because I think that kind of goes into cadence and huddle and all that other stuff. Um, so we talked about, yeah, playing games with them. Oh, so next topic um, is kind of defenses that you're going to see. Uh, we actually didn't see as many junk defenses this last year on the varsity level as we usually do. Um, but just some big things, overall formations, themes, alignments uh, that we look at. Um, I think I've got a few of these with examples. Um, so the first is Eagle 8. Um, trademark of an Eagle is going to be, right, you're three on three here. So basically they're negating your entire offensive line. Um, usually they probably put their star kid at middle backer. Um, Cause they're hoping this kid eats everything up and their two outside guys are going to be able to cover. Um, I don't see a lot of teams playing this well. I think these guys typically get exposed because if they're going to come in on the dive phase or any type of option, that's going to leave your flats wide open. Um, and if they're going to stay outside to be responsible, you can run right underneath them with like a, just a zone dive. Uh, but what this does do is it makes your, like, obviously you can't really pull. Ooh, didn't mean to grab the back of there. Can't really pull out of this. So anytime that I or we see an eagle, your first thought should be rocket, right? Run outside on these guys because you should be able to um, get by without blocking most of them, right? So if you're going to do play side, right, you can probably get him blocked here. You're going to go out like that on your rocket. Uh, we've also got him going out. So we might, you could do this as a regular rocket, or if you wanted to do this as more of like a, a switch concept, right? Run him on a switch, have him kick out the corner. Now there's no one here for your rocket. Um, I'll show you, we actually had, who is this? Marion Catholic down in Chicago Heights. Um, came, out against, came out in an eagle against us. So you see they're lined up. They've got one, two, three, four, five. They actually are playing this guy further inside than I thought. That they came out in an eagle. We ran rocket and ran outside multiple plays in a row. And I think after the second series, they got out of their eagle uh, because they, it wasn't sustainable for them. And as you can see, um, these are the same play taken at just about the same second first play of the game actually it gives you a lot of space you know post wheel if you want to run a smash concept um, the key here though is if your line is not very good that's why you want to get it to the outside um, if you these guys were I don't know if you can tell here um, I don't know if this is me picking on a high school kid but oops um, this guy was huge and our center was not as huge. So we didn't feel very good about us manning up one-on-one -on -one down the line and being able to stop them and block them for our normal package. So we just ran rocket, right? If you can't block them, read them or run past them. Um, and that was kind of our, our go-to in that front. Uh, is you have your Eagle 7. Um, so still you get your same Eagle look, your TNT. Uh, over your guard, center, guard. Um, but instead of three backers, you have two backers with two safeties. Um, same idea. The only thing that's different here, you know, you should instantly be thinking rocket uh, because, right, we've got one, two, three for essentially one, two. Uh, assuming the guard can pick him up. And we don't, like, you just don't have to block any. Did I put this up against? This is... Joliet Catholic, home of Mike Allstott, I think, if I'm remembering this game correctly. Um, so you'll see they actually have their tackles uh, offset in threes, which is fine. Um, the idea of an eagle is just basically all three of them are covered. So whether, if that nose is shaded, if they're playing games around, like at the end of the day, it's still an eagle. Um, you know, you're not going to want to midline this. You're not going to want to you know, do anything inside here, right? Like it's essentially five on three here. Uh, so that's why you want to try to run outside. 
I believe the, yeah, so here's our, right, double eagle, TNT, run rocket. This is, uh, I forget if this is Paul Johnson's exactly. Um, where was I thinking this was? That's nah, fine. Um, so that's Eagle 7. We saw not as often. Eagle 8 was, we saw a few teams run against us. Um, a lot of teams just came out against their base. We actually saw more uh, seven man like place and we were a small team. So we probably could have gotten better in taking advantage of that. Um, we also faced a couple great athletes that are now going to go and play on Saturdays if Saturdays happen or when Saturdays happen. Um, 335. We, we only faced one team that was a 335 and we got mm. there. Um, they ran this a lot like a monster back uh, where this middle backer was... They'd be doing stunts. They'd send, you know, the tackle outside and the backer inside. And yeah, they had all that covered. They were also very good. Uh, it was, there was a lot of things wrong that day. But anytime that you get an odd stack like this, if we were to go back to the, the Paul Johnson, uh, if then statement, where am I here? I'm like staring into my computer and I've got kind of like a ring light looking at me. So it's hurt my eyes to look at a little bit. If tackles, right, bring either bring your wide receiver in on the line like a tight end or uh, b flip your tackle onto the other side and bring your wide receiver in to run like a true tackles formation. Theoretically, if you can not present them a balanced front, uh, they're going to have to break that stack somehow um, and you can probably exploit that extra gap that they can't cover. Uh, is the thought process behind that. So, um, did I actually put a, an image of this? Yeah, we only had one, uh, we had some camera issues this game too, um, but you'll see here that that, um, yeah, th this Mike Backer is, you know, you'd probably call that one too. I tried to send everything outside. Look how, like, you can't even see the corner here. Um, who's guarding our guy. So we probably could have done a little bit more with a, a tight or a, a tackle heavy over. Um, let's see, outside. They're also a very good team. I'm not going to make any excuses for what we should have done because nothing was working. I'm sure you guys all know those games. Uh, the last one that used to be really popular um, when I was in Madison, Wisconsin, we would see it a fair amount, uh, was the 4-4 stack, um, and not in a traditional stack, but that, where they would stack their two inside backers, and this, uh, the further back inside backer was basically their monster. They're free um, because it really screws up your blocking schemes, right? Like if you're trying to run triple against this, um, and we would send him, because what we would still call this, we'd still try to call this, um, we would actually try to send him inside, we'd be reading him and reading him, and then we would go here, and then try to scoop and go like that. Basically what happens is it's very hard if this guy starts seeing run and scrapes over, it's very hard to out leverage him uh, with your a backs and your tackle is not going to make that block. Um, especially if these D tackles are good enough to warrant uh, the need for two guys, it can be really hard. Um, we actually saw this, who ran this? Madison Memorial ran this back when Jake Ferguson was playing middle linebacker, um, who's now a tight end at Wisconsin, I think. Uh, and we actually managed him pretty well, but in general, this gives teams a lot of fits. Uh, if I remember right, it was either Clemson or Georgia ran this against Georgia Tech two or three years ago, uh, and I think it got a little popular after that. Uh, Quinn asked, what school did I coach at in Madison? That was Madison West, rip. Um, I won't say anything negative, but I was there for five years 
before moving to Chicago. And then, um, I think that's it on defenses. I was really hoping uh, that I would see some other things on film uh, that I could have talked to you about. It's a good question. So, what's hard is even if you were to run like you know, if we were gonna do like a traditional look at this and we were gonna run, I don't know, say midline, actually mid triple could be a decent look on this, right? Like if we were gonna go mid, especially if we can get the scoop there, but that gives us a pretty good over under. Oh shoot, that's what our A-backs do. Miss the block there. I think mid triple against this works really well. Um, I think you could formation them out of this. You know, if you ran a trips, um, let's see. So if we're gonna run trips, let's get out of draw. And I'm gonna run this A back over here. They either are gonna have to bring this free safety over, which I don't think most teams would wanna do. Um, if they tried to split the difference with this backer, then I'm attacking this area that's vacated uh, because they can't cover all of these. Uh, I would probably try to look really hard if he's flowing, right? If he's reading the mesh and charging it hard and trying to read the play, I'd try to do a lot of counter action um, to go back, try to get him to take a few steps right down this way and then be able to just go you know, three on three on the backside. Saw this look with the backer running sideline to sideline. He just ran rocket until the guy got tired. Uh, that's a great point. If you have the athletes and you can get there, and if you think that you're, you're kind of betting that your kids are better conditioned than that kid, uh, I can definitely see that. Otherwise, yeah, you could do formations. Um, hook curl and flask to be open. So those are all the questions you can let me know in the chat. I've been uh, midline with a QB. Um, you'd probably like Q, maybe like a QB follow fold. Like he'd be there. He'd probably try to get one of those two if we can get a fan on him. And, uh, um, but being able to run midline, you could even, because you've got, if you're going to fold him in, you may not even need to run this as midline. You could just run it as like a QB follow. Um, or, you know, if you want to run that off of a triple look, if you want to run that off of a zone dive look, you could do both of those. Um. If you wanted to get more into like the zone option, the lead option, you know, zone option kick is probably really nice right here. There's a, there's a lot of looks out of this. Again, I don't know if teams are still running this as much. It used to be kind of popular, or I'd see it a lot on like Coach Huey and other message boards that teams were doing it. I think the, the biggest thing as a flexbone coach is just to know where your, you know, where your levers are that you can play with. Like, hey, they're reading the A backs. Okay, let's influence, like send the A back out of the play, get them to run out of the play and then run underneath. Or it's, um, you know, whether they're really disciplined in their scraping or whether they're, um, you know, we had a really, we had a really hard time with odd fronts with, uh, you know, tackles or ends that would knife inside really hard, right? Because it forces that read, it forces things to be hard. So that's where knowing like rocket, mid triple, um, kind of having your answer. Uh, so we like to go through our game plan and go, okay, like this is the defense we expect. If we run this, how are they going to adjust to it? And then be ready with an adjustment to their adjustment. Um, and a lot of times that's what we'll do at halftime. Uh, if we don't, you know, if we're seeing something we're not expecting, uh, we'll have a plan and we'll be watching. 
um, but really figuring out how they're aligned pre-snap, um, if they're running any type of motion uh, or if they're you know stunting based on motion, being able to call that out and figure it out.